Hello, my dear students. Welcome back to semester two. It was actually an interesting semester last semester when we enjoyed together the solid state electronics course for 12 continuous weeks. Now it's time to reflect what we have learned in the electronic, sorry, in the solid state course in our electronic course. In the solid state electronics course, we study basic or what we can say the foundational or the fundamental electronic devices from a material physics and a semiconductor point of view. Now it's just a time to study together how we can integrate these devices in electrical or electronic circuits. So from this brief definition of the module, you can understand that in this course, we are going to study the electronic perspective of the device. We are going to deal with our electronic devices. I mean, the electronic diodes, the bipolar junction transistors, and the metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor, or what's called the MOSFET. We are going to deal with these devices as a circuit elements as a two terminal device in the case of a die or as a three terminal device in the case of uh, transistors. In the previous semester, we have learned it together the deep physical and semiconductor physics of these devices, how electrons are moving, how holes are moving, why we have a current, different types of current and so on. Now, in this, semester, we are going to have a macroscopic view of these devices. So we are not going to go deeply inside the device. We are going to deal with such a devices as uh, terminal devices, like whenever you deal with a resistance, for example, in circuits, or a capacitor or a coil or whatever. So you just deal with it as a circuit element, and that's all. So this is the same manner we are going to do. And then we are going to reflect our understanding in the solid, solid state electronics course in studying or in investigating the electronic circuits. I hope you enjoy this course. It's really one of the very important, and for me, it's one of the very interesting courses in your curriculum. Also, in order to make um, or to, in order to make sure that we are on the same ground, I'm going to make some sort of a flashback in the beginning of each lecture regarding the data, material, information, I believe you need from the previous course. So I will not roll or I will not uh, uh, um, act on your memory. I will make this refreshment by myself in the beginning of each module or sorry, in the beginning of each lecture. For example, in three weeks from now, we are going to start the electronic diet. So in the beginning of this lecture, we will make some sort of flashback regarding the set of information we need from the solid state course in order to continue studying the electronic diet and so on for the MOSFET and the photon period. Now let's start our zero lecture. And as usual, the zero lecture is a module outline lecture. We are going together to see why we are studying electronics. What is the position of this course among your curriculum? What is our assessment during the semester? How we are going to distribute lectures and tutorials? What about labs? And we have a different way of having labs either on campus or online. So we are going to investigate all this stuff together for something like 30 to 35 minutes. And after that, starting from the next lecture, inshallah, we are going to investigate the technical topics of the module. So please now let me start sharing my presentation slides and start our zero lecture. Okay, so let's now return to my slides. This is lecture number zero, as I mentioned, this is the course outlined. 
Our module is electronics one, and its code is 20 ECE 05C. So let's start the journey. Actually, the journey starts 74 years ago. One, when Shockley and his team invented the first transistor ever. They have been awarded the Nobel Prize based on this invention. As in this stage, by 1947, it considers as the turnover for the electronics industry. Before 1947, electronic industry or electronics was based on what's called the tube technology. And this results with a very huge devices. If you recall any Arabic or English movie in the, in the, the beginning of that previous century, the, mo the most simple way to check this huge device electronics is whenever you see a ra radio device, an FM radio, for example, or something like that. In this stage, you will find that the radio is something like a, a huge device, which has a height for maybe 100 or more than 100 centimeters and the width of 50, 60 centimeters. It's a very bulky device. This was what's called the tube technology. But in 1947, when Chuckley and his team starts to invent the first transistor, and by the way, the first transistor was a bipolar junction transistor, an MBM transistor. When they start, when they first start to fabricate this transistor, they turn over the electronics industry, but I would say they turn over the human life the human way of thinking, because this is the day at which we shift to what's called the modern electronics. Across this journey of the 74 years, we have, let me say, hundreds, thousands, maybe millions of electronic devices. Starting from digitalized computers, going to all uh, electronic devices everywhere in our line, optical, optoelectronic devices, electronic biosensors, electronic industry in the, in the automotion industry. Now we have electrical vehicles. All these stuff are based on transistors that have been first uh, invented in 1947. So it's a huge journey of development and innovation. Then what about future? We're still seeking for more inventions in the future. One of these inventions, which is already now starts to be in the market, what's called the wearable electronics. The electronics that you can wear, what's called, we call it the wearable electronics. And also we have another sort of innovation. By the way, this is just a sample to demonstrate the future perspective of electronics. However, we have a huge amount, an infinity number of innovations in, the, in, in expected in the future for, for, for the electronics industry. But this is just a small, a small example. So we have what's called the wearable electronics and we also have what's called the skinetronics or what's called the electronics on skin. By the way, we have what's called now the under skin electronics. Those biosensors, permanent biosensors used for medical application. This is one part of innovation in the field of electronics. Okay, so let's turn somehow technically in our mind. The first is again to express the curriculum in the electronic part. So I believe that we you already see this slide maybe three, four months ago in mid-October when we start together the solid state electronic tool course. I told you that we have the solid state electronics and the electronics one in your year one. 
then you have electronics two and measurements in year two, then you have electronics three and digital electronics in year four, and finally you have VLSI and the middle system in your final year. This is the overall curriculum. Now solid state becomes some sort of a past, and now we are in the electronics one course. Your first course you, uh, in the uh, circuit perspective of electronics. Okay, myself, Samah Abdel Latif, I will be honored to be part of this course as a modulator. And also, also it's a great pleasure for me to have our TA engineer, Mira Mohsen, as a module TA. Additionally, we will also have engineer Ola Hassan as the lab engineer who will take over the on-campus lab. I will we talk about uh, on-campus and online labs later on. Okay, so what? we expect from this course. We have four big chapters in this course. We will start with something which is somehow easy. Let's make it a smooth start, which is the operational amplifiers. This is uh, one of the most famous electronic ICs or integrated circuits used in the electronic industry. Then we go to the PN junction dot. Then we are going to the metal oxide semiconductor field of a transistor, or what's called MOSFET. And finally, we will terminate our course with the bipolar junction transistor or the BGT. Maybe you can now raise, a, raise your hand and ask. We are just repeating the solid state course because the second, the third, and the fourth chapter is typically the same like the course for the solid state. This is true. But as I mentioned in my introduction, the solid state course study these devices from a physical semiconductor slash material perspective. However, in this stage, we are going to use these devices in, as a circuit element in our electronic circuits. So we are repeating the same topics, but with different perspectives. Okay, about assessment, we have, as usual, three types of assessment. We have an in-class test. We have only a one in-class test. It should be scheduled in week nine. We have also a lab course work in the form of a, of a lab, and it has a 20%. I will um, focus on the labs in more detail manner in the next couple of slides. And then we have, of course, an unseen exam, which weights 60%. This is the three type of assessment. What about labs? Actually, if you will check your timetable, you will find that you have two different labs. You have one hour weekly, which is an online lab delivered by engineer Amira Mohsen. And you have a weekly on-campus day where in some days you will have electronics module based on lab allocation I already sent to you. So, in this course, we have two types of labs. We have what we can call an online simulation lab where we are going to use multi-sim as our CAD simulation tool. And we also have the on-campus electronics lab that will be located in lab A0. So this is the overall. And by the way, you are going to be assessed in both. You will have an online exam for that, or online course work lab for that online uh, lab using Multisim, and you will have on campus practical tests by the end of the semester, of course, for your on campus electronics uh, lab. So it is 10% weighted here and 10% weighted there. As I just mentioned, we have a lecture on Wednesday from 9 to 11. Of course, this will be online. We have for each group, we have one tutorial for two hours, one online, uh, online lab for multi-sim uh, for uh, one hour and an on-campus day. As I mentioned, we already sent to you a full description for the lab allocation and that distribution of labs. And we also, I think schedule or subdivide you into subgroups to, 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 to make sure of the social distance and this will be sent you very shortly. Another important point, my dear students, is this Zoom link. 
This is Zoom link. You find it here. You find it also in the email I sent it to you, and you will find it in the e-learning page. I will show you our e-learning page uh, after a few minutes. So this Zoom link is used for all online sessions for this module. I mean, all lab tutorial, lab online labs, uh, online tutorials, online lectures will be accessible using this Zoom link. So you just need to save this Zoom link in your uh, mobile or laptop or whatever, and you, then you can attend every session based on the schedule time of course. So this is how you can access our online sessions. This is our usual um, platform for the e-learning page. We have the online lecture, uh, sorry, the outline, the lectures, the tutorials, the assessment, and the online submissions. And please let me now stop sharing for a while and transfer to our e-learning page just to make sure that you uh, know how we distribute our e-learning page in a way that you can easily access the material in the future. Okay, so this is our e-learning page. As usual, you will find the contacts for the module leader. So here you can find my email, my mobile number, my internal external number here in the my office, everything about my all my contacts. Also, you will find the module specs, of course, and you will find here the time plan. I, I, I think it's it's good now to, to open this time plan. Okay, so this is our time plan. I believe you already you are already familiar with the, the format of our time plan. So we have lecture on Wednesday, as you can see. We will start uh, tutorials in next Sunday for Group A2 and next Monday for Group A1. We also will start the uh, online lab, se lab sessions for uh, in, in that second academic week from next week, inshallah. So uh, in the first online lab, this will be something like an introduction to a multi-sim. I believe you already use multi-sim uh, in your circuit, uh, circuit school, circuits one in the semester one, but some sort of refreshing your knowledge regarding multi-sim. Uh, maybe also you can see some other components because usually in the circuits you are using passive elements like resistance, capacitors, and because hearing we are going to use other uh, devices like transistor or, or dies or something like that. So this will be a good start. Then we will continue in this manner. We, we have uh, uh, two, uh, I think we have two online, uh, sorry, two on-campus experiments. The first is scheduled in week three and week four for group A1 and group A2. And then the second is scheduled in, uh, in week nine and week 10 for group again A1 and N2. So you will enter the lab for an on-campus experiment twice per semester. Uh, also, we have uh, the in-class test scheduled in week nine, as you can see. We have also, as I mentioned, a practical test for, the, sorry, an online test for the multi sim experiments. I think you already have something similar in your circuit schools in semester one. And also we have an, a practical test in week 13 uh, for the on-campus experiment. So this is the role plan. You can check uh, every and each session in the semester using this uh, plan. Uh, let, me, let me return back to our e-learning page. So uh, this is a lab allocation. So you can pick up in which group you are, and then you can know in which weeks exactly you are going to enter the lab O11. For the on-campus experiment, and so on, we have of course all uh, other materials like the reading list and all this stuff. Uh, then we have the normal sections. We have the lectures and the lecture scripts as usual. Here, this is the zero lecture, and we have the uh, recorded lecture. Of course, you can access it either from the e-learning or using YouTube. We have also uh, the tutorial uh, problems. We have the on-campus lab manual and the CATSI knowledge which is multi-sum uh, lab, uh, online lab manual. We have the interactive material 
for the interactive simulation tool. In this semester, we are going to offer you a set of very interesting uh, online simulation tools implemented by ourselves, our team here in the BUE. We have implemented uh, this. We have some experiments for the uh, semiconductor material. We have another for the uh, bipolar junction transistor, I think. We have two or three tools. I hope that you can enjoy using them and also you are going to solve some problems using this uh, online tools. Uh, and finally, we have the online submission of grading. Here you can, you are requested to uh, submit uh, any online assessments. Uh, uh, like for example, whenever we have an online um, lab that will be implemented in week 12, then you, are, you, will, you will have a, a submission link in this section. And finally, the feedbacks. Uh, this is a bi-directional feedback, either the feedback from you or the feedback from us. We are going to generate a set of uh, Google Forms where you can enter and say your opinion in the delivery for the lectures, the tutorial, the lab, whatever you want in this section. So this is generally how the e-learning page looks like, how it's distributed. I hope that this is somehow an easy way to pick up the material you need for our course. So now let me please return back to the uh, presentation, uh, to, uh, to my presentation slides. Okay, so this is the e-learning distribution as I mentioned. Finally, about the reference list. What about the reference list? Okay, so as, you, as I just mentioned in the e-learning, you have a, a series of reading list. However, I, am, I, I would recommend this reference as our main reference. Let's say somehow this is our textbook, which is microelectronics workers for Sidra Smith. Sidra uh, is one of the most famous uh, references dealing with electronics and electronic circuits. Uh, so I believe it's somehow written in an easy manner so you can easily pick up the information from. It's uh, one of the interesting, maybe for me, it's one of the interesting uh, references. Uh, we are going to tackle, I believe, four chapters from uh, from Sedra. Actually, the, the way we manage the course is somehow synchronized with Sedra. So Sedra starts with operational amplifier and we will start with operational amplifier. Then we have the electronic guides and then the MOSFET and the BGT. Maybe the, the last two chapters are somehow, somehow shuffled. I think I believe that Sedra starts with BGT and then most and we will do that. The, uh, the, uh, we'll do it in another round. So we will start with MOSFET and then we will terminate with BGT. And I believe I already uh, spelled out this reason uh, before in the solid state courses because historically the BGT is the first transistor invented by Shockley and his uh, team in 1947. However, by the development of the electronic industry, the MOSFET becomes the leading transistors now. That's why in the modern courses for electronics all over the world, you will find that um, usually module leaders consume more time and effort dealing with MOSFET rather than BGT because now BGT applications are somehow limited, maybe in power electronics and something like that, but most of low level or medium level electronics are implemented using, using MOSFET. Of course, 99% of the digital electronics are using MOSFET. So that's why we, we consume more time in MOSFET rather than the BGT. This is uh, our references, and I believe this is the end of our first zero lecture for the electronic course. I think, I hope that you enjoy this, uh, this lecture. I also hope that you get more involved in the semester whenever you uh, check this zero, uh, zero outline module uh, lecture you can express how the module will go through, how you will, how we will arrange the module, how we will arrange chapters, how we will arrange the assessment as well. Now this is the end for our zero lecture. And let's start from the next lecture, our operational amplifier or what is abbreviated by the up end, where we are going to spend roughly three weeks 
in studying the operational amplifier. Thank you very much and see you in our next lecture, inshallah.